Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. All righty, welcome back to the show. And do we ever have an incredible guest lined up for you today? We've got Miss Allie Evelyn today uh, with us. Uh, Hallie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tootsie. I'm glad to be here. Well, let's just get right into it. Uh, tell us exactly what it is that you do and what type of clients do you exactly help? Of course. Um, I am a transformational coach. Um, that's kind of like a life coach on steroids. And I am also a leader of transformational tours all over the planet. And no matter what I'm doing, my objective is to help my clients, who are almost exclusively women, to lead the very best lives that they came to this planet to do. How did you get involved in, in doing this? This is so fascinating to me. <laughs> it's a great question. Um, I actually got started because I had this huge spiritual awakening in Egypt um, this was about 15 years ago, uh, and it took me from being an atheist into being this deeply spiritual person, literally in a lightning bolt of a second. Um, it was such a moving experience for me, such a, a shift of my life, um, that I actually wrote a, a travel memoir about it, um, about my own awakening, about the trips that I ended up leading up the Nile um, I've been to Egypt now uh, almost 20 times leading tours. Um, so I wrote Red Goddess Rising uh, to talk about what had happened to me. And that started me leading trips. And I began to, I would take people to help them experience some of the spiritual awakenings that I had. And they would come on the trips and they would have these issues, sometimes lifelong issues that they really wanted to change and shift. But they were like with me for a week or with me for two weeks. And then I started eating, eat, leading Eat, Pray, Love tours to Bali. And uh, this was like before the movie even came out. And I was just really moved by the book. And I wanted to lead tours to Bali that, built a, a, that were built around the same principles of, again, trying to change your life, trying to really up-level um, everything that was happening to you. And women would show up and they would be like, you know, my husband killed himself or my uh, beloved child died or and I really want to move forward. I want to move past this horrible thing that happened and I don't know how. And so I started to pull the tools out of my toolbox that I had learned in my own spiritual journey of growth and started trying to help them and was very successful with really fast, deep work. And so eventually I started becoming a transformational coach so that I could help women at home as well as um, helping them on their, on their travels. And I'm also 30 years an entrepreneur, almost like 28, 29 years, I guess. Um, so I have a lot of experience in business. And so I've also started helping people transform their businesses as well. Again, this idea that, like, I keep coming back to that we're here, we get this life on this planet, we get to make this incredible opportunity of just waking up every day and breathing every day, and what are you going to do with that? Kelly, uh, you are incredibly accomplished. I know you've been featured in, in some major publications uh, uh, just across the board, but let me ask you this. Um, I've heard you speak about transformational coach. Is that like a, a life coach? I mean, what's the, is it similar to that or is there a difference? Can you explain to the audience the differences? Yeah, I usually just shorthand it as it being like a life coach on steroids, but that is a very flip way of describing it. Um, you know, I, I don't want to put down like other types of coaching, there's a lot of things that people go into therapy or coaching for, and um, those things are very valid. But I've had clients who come to me who are like, you know, like I had I had one woman. She was on a um, on a therapist sofa five days a week, an hour a day for like years, and we did more work together. She said in two months 
than she had gotten out of this other person in, in several years. And the idea is that you're taking this deep dive down into the original reasons for whatever happened to you happening. Most of us, it goes back to our childhood. I work with a lot of women, a lot of women who had abuse in their childhood, whether that was physical abuse or sexual abuse or both. Um, and those things can be debilitating the rest of your life. Um, but the thing is, and the thing that I really want people to know, you're not ever stuck with what you were handed. I believe that you're handed that because that's your mission in this lifetime is to be able to shift into something better. And a lot of people stay stuck, and I help them get unstuck from you know, sometimes what feels like the deepest possible mud or the deepest possible quicksand. Um, a lot of people, when they come to me, they say, I'm drowning. And I help them tread water. You know, I help them get their heads above water. I help them tread water. And usually I, you know, I, I point them the right way so that they can swim. Um, most of my clients don't even stay with me that long. A month to three months is, is you know, three months is like the, a long time. I think two months is about the average because the work is complete then. You know, it's like it, it's kind of like triage for their soul. Very, very fascinating. Let me ask you this. Deep down you know, at its core root, what is what drives you? What gives you the passion to do this uh, to help uh, so many people? Oh, I love that question. Thank you so much for asking me that. Um, I believe wholeheartedly in the positive aspects of humanity. Like after my spiritual awakening in Egypt, I actually stopped watching the news. I couldn't even listen to advertising actually for a couple of years, but I definitely stopped watching the news. I think that our culture, our Western society spends so much time living in fear and spend so much time focused on the wrong things. We focus on celebrity. We focus on how much money we're making. We focus on the accomplishments of our work lives to the exclusion of our, of, of having a well-rounded life. In fact, I have a whole program called Reclaiming You, Unlocking Your Personal Happiness Code that is designed to help women get back to the idea that they can have a part of themselves in their lives without being selfish. I work with nurses sometimes. They're, here they are giving care to the world and neglecting themselves so completely. There's actually a joke in the nursing industry that they're like the least healthy profession because of how many of them neglect themselves as they're caring for everybody else. And I want to just let everybody on the planet know that that's not necessary, that you can have a life that is well-rounded. You can have a life where you do good work, but you can have a life that is fulfilling on so many other levels and that giving back to yourself is at the heart of that, that giving your, to yourself, that nurturing yourself, having what I like to call personal me time isn't selfish at all. In fact, you become the nucleus for if you you know if you treat that nucleus well you become that center of the of the wheel and and you shoot all these different um you radiate out all these different directions that can help your work your family your home your parents your you know your health all of those are 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 things that come out of that center piece where you are really looking after yourself well and that it's not selfish to do that. That's, I mean, at the core of everything, I always come back to that because I had to learn that the hard way. And I see that with so many of my clients. You don't have to be stuck. You know, it's not, it, it's not necessary for you to keep up with that story that you were handed. You can put that burden down and walk away from it, walk forward into something better. The person that's listening uh, to the show and, and they find themselves in that position of being stuck, um, what would be, what's like the number one mistake that they'll make when, when you're stuck and, 
And and how do you get unstuck? I guess what's the fastest way to to get unstuck? <laughs> well, the the mistake that they make is thinking they can fix it by themselves. And I've seen that over and over again. I get comments when I I, I have a um, I have a free session that I offer sometimes, and I'm going to offer it to your listeners right now. Um, you can go to she transformed she transformed dot com slash fix dash your dash life. Um, and I'm just going to verify that that URL is correct while I'm talking. But I'm that's that's a free session that I offer that will help people. Oh no, fix dash my dash life. She transformed dot com slash fix dash my dash life. And that is something where people can sign up for a free session with me. It's 30 days to reclaim your life, but I do a strategy session where I let people just call me and say, look, this is the thing that's bugging me. And I will give them like three things. And in the next 30 days, you can use those three things to transform your life. Because a lot of people feel like they can do it by themselves, but they're doing the same thing over and over again and expecting those results to be different, which, as you and I both know, is the definition of insanity. And so you find that people are just making themselves crazy. It's like their own mini hamster wheel of, well, if I just do this, and if I just do this, and if I just do this, and maybe that lasts for three days or a week, and then they just don't do it anymore because we want to go right back to that set point that we've had. And I find that my particular clients anyway tell me that I have this sort of lovingly straightforward way of of smacking them a little bit <laughs> to say, hey, you know, this is your opportunity to change, really change. But we also, I think the other mistake people make is they, well, this for sure is a huge thing. People try to change the outside without bothering to change the inside. And that is a recipe for getting exactly where you've gotten so far, which, of course, is not where you want to be. So we work on those mindset issues. As I said before, a lot of those are coming from their childhood. And so, they, you know, when they work with me over a month or two months, we'll shift those childhood issues, and then you find that, you're able to shift the stuff that's happening in your life. People don't want to believe that, you know, as within, so without, but it's pretty much scientifically scientifically proven that if you continue to just try to change the exterior without having changed the interior first, you're going to get the same results you've always gotten. And every living being is proof of that when they don't, you know, change the stuff that's really at the core. Mm. Hallie, let me ask you this. Um, what has been a key element of your success? Perseverance. No question, perseverance. <laughs> no doubt about like it. Take, I did no doubt about it. I don't like to take no for an answer. I don't like to... I, I won't lie down if I think there's still a stone left to be unturned. And like I said, I've been in business for myself long enough to know that, you know, I mean, I, I look at most famous people when they ask, like, what's the key to your success if they're, unless it's like somebody like a Mark Zuckerberg where it happened when they were quite young. They say, I just, I, I never stopped. I never worried about failure. I just kept going. Um, you know, so many, like here are celebrity culture, so many of these actors who became famous overnight. But you look back and re the reality is that they worked and worked and worked and were unheard of for the first 10 years of their career. Well, so many other people went home, they kept going. It's not a guarantee, of course, but I think it's a very important key. And for me, it's it's the key. Fantastic. Well, let's talk a little bit about leadership. I want to ask you, um, who are your uh, heroes in leadership uh, and uh, some people you respect and admire uh, in the leadership realm or maybe have made an impact in your life? Yeah, I think that um, a lot of women say Oprah Winfrey, and I mm -hmm. I really couldn't agree with that more. And But I have a kind of a different 
I have a different way of seeing her, I suppose. I did not come, you know, to know her through her television show. I never watched it. It was really only in the last few years that I came to really admire and respect the work that she's done. And I went to one of her live events, and she was she had Deepak Chopra, um, the um, meditation guru, um, in one you know as one of her speakers. And we sat in a stadium, a stadium, and there were ten thousand people in the stadium with me. And we sat and meditated together. And that was not what we had come for. We had come to see Oprah. We had come to, you know, she was having like one of her three-day event weekends. And we had come for all of that. But in the middle of this, I was marveling that she was able to get 10,000 people with their eyes closed, turning within and focusing on healing themselves. And I was just so impressed with that. It wasn't, she didn't say, hey, everybody gets together in the stadium, like half the people would have stayed home. And I'm sure half the people in the stadium had never meditated before. But it was just the power of bringing all those people together. That made a huge impression on me. And it taught me that you don't necessarily want to come at everything from a straightforward way. You don't want to declare necessarily this intention to change the world from jump. You know, maybe you set out with a smaller intention, and then it grows from there. Another um, hero for me is uh, Ariana Huffington, the founder of Huffington Post. Um, and one of the reasons that she's my hero is that she has chosen to reclaim her own life. Um, she was actually in a little minor accident, uh, I think about nine years ago. She fell and hit her head on her desk and got a concussion. But she did it because she had so much lack of sleep that she literally just passed out in her wow. office. And it was, and she she turned her life around because of that. And she now believes that you have to get like eight hours of sleep a night, or you're kind of screwed. And when I was younger, before I had my spiritual awakening, before I understood that I had a soul, I read the statistic that said the average person sleeps eight hours a night. And I did the math and I was like, oh my God, I'd be sleeping a third of my life away. Well, let's not do that. Let's only sleep six hours a night or five or how little sleep can I get? Because and I'm awake the rest of the time. Well, you know, I understand things on a much bigger level right now, and I understand that I wasn't doing myself any favors and that, you know, working more, my 80-hour to 100-hour weeks weren't any healthier than Ariana's. But she, of course, has a platform where she can claim this and help millions of people. And I really think that's important because, you know, what do I teach in my coaching practice and in my on my uh, transformational tours I teach the idea of balance and the idea that, you know, that there should be plenty of you in your life. And so I love that she's doing that. I think that's so important. You know, this thing about balance, you know, I, I, would, I would have to think there's a lot of people that uh, are out of balance or have areas in their life that are completely out of whack and out of balance. Uh, wouldn't you agree? For sure. Yep, I see it all the time. The funny thing is, it's not that hard to fix. Um, one of my clients recently uh, kind of confessed, just in an offhanded remark, that they had moved offices like four years ago, and she had been so busy growing the business. She was a manager in a practice, and she'd been so busy growing the business that she'd never had time to properly unpack from the move. And every time she walked into her office, she felt like a total failure because she saw all these boxes and she considered herself completely disorganized. We'd been working together for like a month by then, and it was very clear to me that she was not disorganized and that she was very good at her work. And when I kind of walked her through all of that, she had to acknowledge, yeah, yeah, she was. But this one thing was just making her feel like she was, you know, a horrible person, I suppose. So I got her to get somebody in to unpack the boxes, to file things, to do the, you know, monkey work that she didn't have time for. And it was like the lights came on, you know, and we do that to ourselves. We don't really realize that there's so much in our lives that can shift 
by just changing one thing that is seems little like, oh, uh, you know, spend eight hours unpacking boxes or pay somebody else to do it if you don't have the time. But there's, you know, there, there, there are so many parts of our lives that we can shift. And again, this comes back to the idea, like, of course you could do it yourself. But how's that been working for you? You haven't yet. So I think that's why a lot of people come to me or to, you know, to other coaches as well. Well, it's amazing to me, uh, Haley, that uh, people don't, or they underestimate the power of change that one little change can make. Everyone in your mind just sort of build it up that uh, change requires this big change, but and the reality is that one little change can really change uh, the the course of your destiny, I think. Uh, absolutely. TC, how do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That is right. And I tell every one of my clients that as we are breaking down that whatever huge insurmountable thing that they have in front of them, into pieces that are manageable. And a lot of times I tell them, you don't even need to see what the next bite of the elephant looks like. Do you, do you have time for me to tell a quick story that I think is very valuable for your listeners? Um, Let's go. About three years ago, almost exactly three years ago, I had this other spiritual awakening and this one was around love. And I, was living in LA and I was with somebody that I thought I was going to, thought was just my soulmate and I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And instead I ended up just jumping ship entirely and moving 3000 miles away to Miami where I never in a million years thought I was going to live <laughs> and, and, and moved in with my love and, the whole thing became this grand experiment in, in up leveling. And I'm so grateful. I mean, it was absolutely the right thing to do, but here's one of my other favorite expressions, leap and the net will appear. But for a long time, it didn't. And they don't tell you leap and the net will appear eventually. But in the meantime, free fall baby. And we have no idea how long it's going to last, but that's what it was like. And so I couldn't see the next step the next bite of the elephant at all. I couldn't see anything. I was like, well, I have my spoon, and I know there's an elephant somewhere, and if I just stick my spoon out, hopefully we'll catch the next bite. But it was like that for like a year and a half. I just had to be in total trust, and it helped me so much to have gone through that process personally because I can say, yes, you can come out the other side, and yes, it can be magnificent. And in the meantime, all you need to be able to know is what the next bite of the elephant is. You don't actually need to know even what the whole elephant's going to look like at the end, and it'll be okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that story. Hey, Haley, uh, let me ask you this. What are some of the business projects you're currently working on that you're excited about uh, and and why? Well, I I to have a little one that I just started on that I'm so excited about. Um, I lost 40 pounds a few years ago. I wanted to finally wake up to the idea that I wasn't afraid of being as big in the world as I'm meant to be. And ironically, that meant getting my, you know, not armoring myself physically anymore with weight. And so I went from like a size 14 to a size 6. So I just wow. started... Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty great. Um, I just started a live meetup here in Miami for women. Um, I called it Unleash the Thin Goddess Within. And it's just a way that I've got of giving back to my local community. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of interest in that because I see that so many times with women where you armor yourself with weight. And I work with, you know, I mean, I've got clients who are, sometimes more than 100 pounds overweight, and and I work with them to get them to understand that if they fix the stuff inside, that will change their outside, and so that's that's one thing that I'm, I'm pretty psyched about. Um, the other thing is um, my Reclaiming You, Unlocking Your Personal Happiness Code, that project is near and dear to my heart. That program was just released, 
and I'm actually starting to speak on a national level about how women can reclaim their lives. And then I just finally launched my um, my transformational tour division where I will be leading trips all over the world to help women transform their lives. Um, so I have a, um, a tour to Cuba in the fall. Um, I have Awakening the Goddess, an Egypt tour that's going to be going on next year. And I actually will be leading my first transformational food tour of, of New Orleans because, frankly, the food in that city will change your life. And um, if people are interested, they can go to toursandretreats.com to get all the information about my transformational tours. That is so cool. I didn't know about the Cuba uh, tour that you've got coming up. I've actually led trips to Cuba already, so I'm very excited about that. I'm really looking forward to it um, as the as the restrictions ease on Cuba. Um, it sure. makes a big difference. But I, I happen to have... Um, a, I have an insider link, so I get to take people and when, you know you go on a what they call a people to people visa, but I get the chance to introduce them to um, a local family that I'm very close with in Cuba, and they get to see how the Cuban people really live, and that's it's beautiful. Wow. It's, it's a really great experience to get to have. Oh, I bet it's an incredible experience. Well, uh, Haley, as we wrap up. Uh, the interview, let me ask you, give me one or two things that you would say to uh, a prospective client who stumbles across this interview. What would you say to them? If you're ready to change, really ready to change, do whatever it takes to make that shift. It's going to mean changing things on the inside, not just on the outside. And if you have problems doing that on your own, and you probably have run into those roadblocks, I hope you'll call me and, you know, take one of my free sessions. And if you don't resonate with what I'm saying, that's totally fine. I hope you'll work with somebody because I feel like we have such an opportunity To not to say, oh, this is the hand I was dealt or, oh, this is my life. Those things that we yearn for, the dreams that we have or the feelings that we get at three o'clock in the morning. I wish I were. I want to. I, if only. I believe that those are our souls calling to us to come be the bigger person that we came to this planet to be. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How can somebody get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to do that, Haley? So I think that the easiest way is to go to shetransformed.com. Obviously, if they want to get a free session, they can go to shetransformed.com slash fix dash my dash life and fill out an application for um, the 30 Days to Reclaim Your Life Strategy session. Um, But I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, If you don't mind, you know, spelling my name, which (laughs) is all kinds of problems, you can also connect with me on Facebook. Um, There is also a She Transformed Facebook group, which is free. I post there very regularly, so people can always join that. Um, there's also a uh, group on Facebook, Transformational Tours and Retreats, that they can go to um, to, to um, sign up for getting more information or go to toursandretreats.com and sign up for that mailing list if they're interested in traveling with me. So I think those are the good ways to get in touch. Well, cool. We'll add, actually add those to the uh, show page uh, for people to uh, click on right from the uh, show page. Thank you. That would be lovely. Yes, absolutely. Haley, I'd love to have you back. We're out of time, but I'd love to have you back uh, maybe after one of your uh, Cuba tours. I think that would really be cool to have you back on the show. Be happy to talk all about Cuba and all about my experiences. It's changing like the speed of light right now, so very interesting. Well, you're definitely making a dent in the universe, and I want to thank you for taking the time today to, to be on the show. Thank you so much, TC. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for all your great questions. All right. Fantastic. Well, there you have it, everybody. Another show in the books. 
and we'll see you the next time on the radio show. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.